Okay, so as is evident from this type of question, we end up with a lot of variables, but we've listed our T3 temperature and we've listed our H3 enthalpy of 279.0. The other quick win that we have here is we know that the enthalpy at position 4 is the same as the enthalpy at position 3 because that throttling process was constant enthalpy. Therefore, H4 also equals 279.0. So just to carry out a quick check, we have our T1 value here, 0 0.1 degrees C. We have our H1 value here, 422.5 kilojoules per kilogram. We have our T2 temperature, 65 degrees C. And we have our H2, 456.9 kilojoules per kilogram. We have our T3 temperature, and we have our H3 value, 279.0. We have our T4 temperature, which is the same as T1, minus 0.1 degrees C. And we have our H4 enthalpy value, because it's the same as H3, 279.0. So in the bottom left-hand corner, we've determined temperatures 1 to 4, and we've determined enthalpy values 1 to 4. All that's left to calculate then is phi in, phi out, P in and our coefficient of performance. Now thankfully this part's relatively straightforward and we have the formulas on our equations and information sheet for these. But just for completeness on this video, phi in is the heat energy into the working fluid and heat energy goes into the working fluid in the evaporator. We go through the evaporator in this direction here. Therefore phi in is the mass flow rate H1 minus H4. Now we have values for all of these variables. We have a mass flow rate of 0 0.04. We have an H1 value, referring to our list on the left hand side, of 422.5. And we have an H4 value, again referring to the left hand side, of 279.0. giving us a rate of heat transfer into the process in the evaporator equal to 5.74 and the units here are going to be kilowatts. The reason it's kilowatts is because our enthalpy values there are actually already expressed in kilojoules per kilogram. So the two values in the brackets there are actually times 10 to the 3. But as we're working in kilojoules on the table and we want an answer in kilowatts, we can work with the raw values, providing we remember that our units are in kilowatts. Next then we have phi out. Now the energy leaving the refrigerant is the energy entering the room. We have the mass flow rate, so the enthalpy exiting H3 and the enthalpy entering is H2. Our mass flow rate for our system remains constant. Our enthalpy H3 is the same as H4, 279.0 and our enthalpy H2 is our value for the superheated vapour, 456.9, giving us a phi out, or the rate of heat energy entering the room and leaving the vapour, equal to minus 7.12 kilowatts. Now, the only reason it's minus here is because that energy is leaving our working fluid. When we come to doing our coefficient of performance calculation, we'll use the magnitude of that, or the 7.12, because that's the rate of heat energy entering the air as it leaves the refrigerant. P in then is the work done by our compressor. Mass flow rate, referring to our diagram, exiting the compressor we have H2 and entering we have H1. Our mass flow rate remains constant. Our H2 value remains constant, 456.9. And our H1 value on the left hand side is 422.5. Giving us a rate of work done on the fluid equal to 1.376 or 1.38 kilowatts will be consistent with our use of two decimal places here. So the final calculation then is the coefficient of performance. Now coefficient of performance is an interesting parameter because what the coefficient of performance tells us is how much heat energy is being supplied to the room when compared to the amount of work or electrical energy being consumed by the compressor. 
In this case, the heat entering the room is the heat leaving the working fluid. So we have phi out, and as mentioned before, it's the magnitude that we're interested in, over P in. So we have 7.12 divided by 1.38 equals 5.2, once again, accurate to one decimal place. So just to provide a very short summary here, the whole purpose of the earlier process in this video was to determine all of the enthalpy values in this process. You'll note here that we need all of our enthalpy values in order to determine the rate of heat transfer into and out of the system, as well as the work being done on the system. Now without having all of those enthalpy values and without having the rate of heat in, rate of heat out, and rate of work done, then we wouldn't be able to determine the coefficient of performance for our heat pump. Now the coefficient of performance number is so important because it helps us to determine whether the use of a ground source heat pump or an air source heat pump is viable in terms of the cost of running that device. Although here we're getting 5.2 kilowatts of heat for every kilowatt of electricity consumed, the cost of electricity is significantly higher than the cost of gas. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful and thanks for listening.